Hello there, my name is Rekha Mukund and I'm part of the CUDA product management team here at NVIDIA, managing the CUDA product for Tegra devices such as Jetson, Drive and Shield product lines. Today, I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to tell you about a new CUDA feature that we've introduced that enables developers on Jetson devices to upgrade the CUDA version to the latest and greatest and enjoy all the new capabilities that these new versions bring with them without the need for changing their Jetson Linux driver or the installed Jetpack version. The topics that I plan on covering in this session are as follows. First, we'll go over the very basics of the parallel computing platform for general purpose computing, aka CUDA. Then we'll go over CUDA in the context of Jetson, talking about how it's packaged and contrast this alongside our CUDA platform for desktop. We'll then go into the real deal or the purpose of this session, which is the CUDA upgradable package for Jetson, how to configure your Jetson devices to start using this right away. We'll also introduce other new compatibility modes that are possible with CUDA on Jetson. And finally, we'll get to see a live example of this feature in action. Now, at the grassroot level, CUDA can be broken into two main parts. First is the CUDA Toolkit, and second is the CUDA Driver. The CUDA Toolkit is a package of tools, compilers, libraries, all of which help developers build applications that will finally run on the SOC's iGPU or the integrated GPU hardware. The CUDA Driver, or the CUDA UMD, provides developers with a set of APIs to access the underlying SOC's iGPU hardware. The CUDA UMD for Jetson devices today is part of what we call as the NVIDIA Jetson Linux Boat Support Package or the BSP, which contains all of the software you would need to run applications on Jetson devices. It includes the Linux kernel, NVIDIA drivers, flashing utilities, sample file system based on Ubuntu, and much more. Let's now look deeper at CUDA in the Jetson context. We'll start with what all of you are Jetson developers are familiar with, the NVIDIA Jetpack SDK. The Jetpack SDK is the most comprehensive solution for building end-to-end -end accelerated AI applications and provides a full developmental environment for hardware accelerated AI at the edge development. It includes the Jetson Linux driver package or the BSP and a complete set of libraries for acceleration of GPU computing, multimedia, graphics, computer vision, etc. Zooming in on the Jetpack SDK, we have the Jetson BSP at the center, and it contains the Linux kernel and the runtime components for Vulkan, EGL, media encoders, etc. More importantly, as you can see, the CUDA driver is baked in and part of the Jetson BSP along with these other components, all of which update as per the rolling release methodology, whose cadence and frequency have typically been different from that of the quarterly CUDA release cadence. And sitting right alongside of that, we have the user space components of the CUDA toolkit. This is separate from the BSP and does not package the CUDA driver. On NVIDIA Jetpack releases, a single version of CUDA is typically supported throughout each major release cycle. For example, Jetpack 4.x or Jetpack 5.x. Users on a particular Jetpack version or revision have had no way to upgrade to newer CUDA releases with newer libraries and the CUDA X stack, even though it might be supported on other platforms. For instance, the currently supported CUDA version in Jetpack 5.x publicly is CUDA 11.4, whereas the latest CUDA on other desktop platforms have moved on. Let's also look at how CUDA is packaged on desktop. So let me first introduce to you a very important piece of the software here called the NVIDIA Display Driver or the Unified Driver Architecture Package. This is a central piece of the software that's used across all of NVIDIA GPUs such as Tesla, GeForce, Quadro, etc. The NVIDIA Display Driver basically contains two parts, the User Mode Driver, UMD, and the Kernel Mode Driver, KMD. The UMD is a northbound interface and provides the developers a set of APIs to access the underlying hardware, whereas the KMD is southbound, which does the heavy lifting of providing the low-level access to the NVIDIA hardware and taking care of housekeeping tasks to ensure that the hardware continues to function properly. The CUDA UMD 
libcuda.so is part of this display driver package. The CUDA installers that you can find on our CUDA downloads page for desktop contain both the CUDA toolkit to build applications as well as the display driver package to run the applications. If you're familiar with how CUDA compatibility works on the desktop, for years now, users have had the option of mixing and matching the driver and the toolkit based on their needs. For example, if you have deployed a particular NV display driver on your machines, run long and arduous validation cycles, lasting weeks and months, and now want to use a new version of the toolkit which has newer features or some performance optimizations or even a new library capability, and you do not want to touch the deployed drivers on your machines since you've done all the painstaking validation, NVIDIA ships a compatibility package with CUDA that you can install on your desktop, and this package takes care of all the required translations or communication between the newer CUDA runtime and the older CUDA driver. Of course, with this, specific new features that require newer driver functionalities will not work. But by and large, pretty much everything else in the CUDA toolkit that doesn't have a stringent driver dependency will function well with this compatibility layer. So due to this, CUDA developers on desktop have had the flexibility to stay up to date with the latest CUDA releases aligning with CUDA's quarterly release cadence. What we are trying to do with this feature is that we aim to bring in the same desktop upgrade experience on the Tegra side. So to the left side, your Jetson Linux BSP with the kernel mode driver stays the same. There will be a default CUDA driver that ships with this BSP, which for Jetpack 5.0 will continue to be CUDA 11.4 CUDA driver except that now we have a new CUDA upgrade package also referred to as the CUDA Compact, which is shown here in the middle box that conceptually works exactly the same way as the one on the desktop side. This upgrade package mainly contains the CUDA driver, libcuda.so, and its dependencies such as the ptxjit compiler and libnv vm that will enable users to access the latest and greatest CUDA functionalities that come with every CUDA release. So this looks and works exactly like how you do a CUDA upgrade anywhere else. You can get your hands on the latest CUDA release in the same CUDA downloads location where one can find all the CUDA releases. It's important to note that the new ARD64 Jetson CUDA installer on this page packages both the CUDA toolkit and the upgrade package together. The step-by-step -step installation instructions provided here ensures that the CUDA upgrade packages get downloaded and installed along with the corresponding CUDA toolkit for Jetson devices. The installed upgrade package is available in the version toolkit location. Please note that this support is available from Jetpack 5.x and CUDA 11.8 release onwards and always refer to the Tegra app note to ensure that you use this only for the supported Jetpack versions. If you are not on a compatible Jetpack version, installation of the upgrade package will fail. Now, the installed upgrade package only provides the files and does not configure the system. Your system would still be using the stock 11.4 CUDA driver that came as default with the Jetpack 5.x version. To upgrade to the latest CUDA, there's one additional step that you'll have to take. You will need to explicitly set the LD library path to include the libraries installed by the upgrade package before running your application. The default CUDA drivers will remain untouched. The application can use either the default version of the CUDA or the one installed by the upgrade package. Again, use the library path variable to choose the required version for whatever use case you may have. So for that application, you set the LD library path variable, point to where the combat package is installed, and you will just run with the new versions of CUDA. You can find complete details on this in our Tegra app note online. So far, the Jetpack releases have typically had a single CUDA version supported, so everything matched exactly the driver and the toolkit. With this feature coming in, things get interesting, so every CUDA release from now on will have a separate installer released for Jetson users to upgrade their devices to that version. And since everything in CUDA is now upgradable, we can have a bit of fun and mix things up, of course, sensibly. So CUDA provides three different compatibility modes. Now, these modes have been present for a long time on the desktop side, so many of you already are familiar with them. For those who aren't, I'd quickly like to touch upon them and go over the scenarios where these can be best utilized. So let's start with our oldest and simplest compatibility mode, the backward compatibility. 
Simply put, this means that your compiled application will work forever and ever on NVIDIA GPUs always. So if you have a CUDA application that you've already built with, say, CUDA 10.2 on Xavier, that application will continue to run with 11.8 or 12.x driver without you needing to recompile it for that device. The next compatibility mode is the minor version compatibility. This will enable you to continue development on whatever version of the CTK that you may be using and call into drivers as long as they're both from the single major version. For example, you can continue working on 11.4 and can count on your application compiling and running on a system with 11.8. And finally, we come to the forward compatibility. This is the exact same compatibility mode that we spoke about in the several slides before this. There is another CUDA tutorial on CUDA compatibility that delves deep into each of these modes. Do check that out. Time to finally see this feature in action. So before we start the demo, let me give you a brief on what we're going to show you here and what are the prerequisites to run this demo in case you'd like to try this out by yourself. Take your shiny Jetson Orin device and flash it with the latest Jetpack 5.x SDK. Remember that Jetpack 5.x comes with CUDA 11.4 by default. We will run a simple Kubla sample that performs a general matrix multiply or the gem operation on the Jetson iGPU and capture the numbers on the memory usage using the top command. We will then download a CUDA installer newer than the one that's on the Jetson device from the public CUDA download page and upgrade the Jetson device to this latest CUDA version. This is done without changing the Jetson Linux BSP or the Jetpack version. After this, we will utilize a new CUDA feature called lazy loading that was introduced only in CUDA 11.8 onwards. So if you are on the plain vanilla Jetpack 5.x, which has CUDA 11.4, you cannot use this feature unless you upgrade to CUDA 11.8 and beyond. So what is lazy loading and what does it do? As our architecture has grown and our libraries have become more and more complex, we ship in these libraries tens of thousands of kernels that can run on the GPU. Each release, each architecture adding more and more of these. This results in the growing size and the growing memory footprint of these libraries from one CUDA release to the next. Up until now, the CUDA runtime loads all of these kernels onto the GPU upon the first CUDA API call. For example, if you call into CUDNN, literally all of the kernels from CUDNN and its dependent libraries load onto the GPU and that takes a lot of memory. Now for a given application, even a reasonably complex one would in reality use a lot less of all of these kernels that were in the library and loaded onto the GPU. So the bottom line is that these kernels take a long time to load, hog up your memory, and you don't really end up using them. So to solve this problem, we introduce lazy loading. It basically means that we will not load the kernels from the libraries onto the GPU up until the point where you'd actually need them. The result is that you only load the kernel subset that you truly need, which means lesser memory, and you aren't loading as much data. You spend less time in data transfers, so it lowers the overall latency. You can read all about this feature in the CUDA documentation. In our demo here, we use this feature by setting the environment variable CUDA module loading equals lazy, and we'll capture the numbers on the memory usage and then compare these numbers from CUDA 11.4 to see what value this feature really brings in. So let's start our demo now. As I said, we already have our Jetson device all prepped up for the demo. It's flashed with Jetpack 502 using the SDK manager and you can see the default CUDA version installed is CUDA 11.4. Now we're just connecting into the target. From here, we're going into the 11.4 samples to run the device query to double confirm that the CUDA version is indeed 11.4. All right, so here, here you can see that the driver and the runtime version are both reported as 11.4. We'll now go into the sample, Kublas, make the sample, and before running this, we will use another terminal to display the resource and memory usage by running the top command. So there you can see that the current res value is 1.1 gigs and memory is 3.6%. 
Now we go into the CUDA downloads page, um, get to the AART64 Jetson native and using the local installation method, we copy paste all of these instructions to the target to install CUDA 11.8. So while this feature is supported starting 11.8, you could just pick up the latest CUDA that's available at this point and then do the same. So we're just checking if CUDA 11.8 is listed in user local. We'll then go to the public GitHub CUDA samples and do a git clone to the target. Note that starting from CUDA 11.6, the samples have been removed from the toolkit and moved exclusively to GitHub. So you'll have to do a clone from here to run any of your samples for 11.8. Another point to note is that you should ensure that the path variable is also set to the latest CUDA version um, as this is needed for NVCC during compilation. We've already set the path variable to point to CUDA 11.8 in the bash RC file since we want that setting to be visible globally. If not, and if you want to use 11.8 for a specific application, then you can set that variable each time by just doing export on the terminal. So you can see that the runtime shows 11.8 while the driver is still with 11.4. Now we will set the LD library path to 11.8 as shown in the Tegra app node documentation. And then we'll run the device query again to ensure we have the driver as well as the runtime now updated to CUDA 11.8. Yeah, there you can see. Now, let's again rerun our CUDA sample. Remember, we're still not using the lazy loading feature and we'll use the top command to capture the, the memory consumption. So we can see the percentage memory is 3.8 and the res value is still 1.1 gig while we run the sample. So it hasn't really changed since the last run. Now we will enable the lazy loading feature by setting the environment variable CUDA module loading equals lazy and we'll rerun the same sample. And now you see the percentage memory is fallen down to 0.3 and the res value is down to 99 MB. So these are the final numbers we saw in the demo. When we run the same sample app with lazy loading feature from the newer CUDA version, we see a huge reduction in both the res as well as the percentage mem values, a whopping 90% savings. And remember, this is just one of the features that's introduced newly, and you're already seeing the benefits of upgrading to the latest CUDA version on your Jetson devices. With this CUDA upgradable feature going forward, all the goodness that each CUDA release brings in, either in terms of new features or performance benefits, can be leveraged on your Jetson devices as well. So we sure hope that you will give this a try soon. To summarize our session for the day, we've seen what the CTK is and what it comprises of. We've also taken you through how CUDA on desktop differs from CUDA on Jetson and how we've bridged this gap by providing a CUDA upgradable package on Jetson. And since all parts of the CUDA are now upgradable, we've shown you how to sensibly mix and match these various moving parts to use it in the best possible manner for your application's needs via the different compatibility modes. And finally, we've also shown you a sample demo on how upgradable CUDA on Jetson can help you use fantastic features such as lazy loading and many, many others that each CUDA version will bring in. I've placed a couple of useful links here such as blogs, documentation and our GitHub samples that will help you with adopting this new feature. Do try it out and send us feedback on the Jetson forum if you see any issues or have some ideas on how we can better this feature. With that, I'd like to thank you all for your time today and I hope this session was informative and useful. Thank you again.